Guitar practice session 10 9 24. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on and then I go back to give a recap of what I practiced so you can get an idea of what you're getting into. This of course being that recap, practice sessions hopefully helping me generate a routine, verbalize the things I'm trying to learn so I can basically get them in my mind, possibly providing information to others possibly providing feedback if anybody sees a better way to do the things that I'm going to be doing. We're going to be using our Excel worksheet here. If anybody else wants to do a similar process to try to explain what it is you're working on, I really think that's useful to learn it, even if no one else is basically listening to whatever, whatever it is you're saying. You could take the worksheet here, do whatever you want with it. Don't worry about plagiarism or anything. Adjust it and work with it, whatever you think would be best for your uh, practice sessions, but the worksheet might be a little bit different than what you might see elsewhere in that I'm going to try to make everything as easy to see as possible from a maneuverability standpoint on the fretboard because that's basically what I like kind of working on shifting around the shapes and try to see the relationships between the different scales, the modes and so on and so forth. Therefore, I like to have everything going the same way from the perspective of where I sit from behind the guitar, meaning I have the top string on top, the low or heavy E string, the one closest to the ceiling. That's how I set up the worksheet with the top string on top, top to bottom, left to right, same orientation as you sitting behind the guitar. I'll also flip my guitar around so it looks like I'm left-handed so that once again, everything's going from the same direction as where you are orientated from behind uh, your guitar so we can line things up as best as possible and just kind of think about the shapes. So this time we're going to be looking then once again at what I call shape number four. Uh, we'll talk about different names for the shape once again, but we're going to be going from this C and looking at the intervals back to this C. I don't actually spend a whole lot of time doing that. I spend a lot more time on other things, which I'll go over in a second here, but we're looking on the, the major scale and the major scale is going to be really important because the major scales, I think of it as our key, our Rosetta Stone, our point of reference from like a physics standpoint that we're going to use somewhat arbitrarily to measure everything else too. Therefore, we have to have that down very clearly so that we can then use it to compare other modes to like the Dorian mode. In particular, I want to look at the uh, numbering system with regards to the intervals and be able to kind of memorize that for the best we can. And once again, use that for comparison to the other modes, the numbering system, this time matching up to the relative positions over here. Here's the notes and the key that we are working in, remembering that the notes are important, useful to learn, but I don't think they're as important from a maneuverability standpoint, as least, to, to then learning the intervals. Because if I learn the intervals and the relative positions, everything is shiftable, like cutting and pasting on an Excel worksheet. I can move everything around. I want to make things as easy as possible for me to learn how to just move the entire shape around, know what mode I'm in by relative positions, more so than memorizing all of the notes that happen to be in each shape or even memorizing every kind of relative position, but instead using the major key as kind of like the reference to, to label those modes. So we go into that. We talk about the intervals because we want to make sure that we understand the intervals, remembering that there's three main ways that we can think about these shapes. We can build them by shape, just memorizing our fingering tectonically, tactonically, tactonically, we can memorize it by, by the intervals, building the intervals from the root, and we can memorize it by, uh, by shapes in terms of the whole step, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half progressions from position to position. So I'm going to spend more time breaking out all three of those ways to see this shape. But then we, before we dive into that, we actually go to this three note per string shape again, spend a pretty good deal of time here. And I'm trying to think more in terms of the, how the three note per string shape differs from the shapes that we're looking on, which is breaking the guitar into five shapes. And then as I learn it, I also want to break out those three ways of learning it, which I go into more detail, the shape, the intervals, and then 
uh, the shape, the intervals, and then the whole steps and the half steps, which I'm less familiar with with this shape. So, I, so I'm working on that more uh, in here. And uh, I also want to start thinking about how we can construct the relative chords from each of the shapes in the position, which I, I'm looking at mainly from a lean forward perspective, which would be bar chords mainly, and a lean back perspective, which from a caged system would be like a G shape for each of the notes in the chord or a C shape for the next string down notes of the chord. So we can start to see how we can convert each note in the shape to a chord using intervals but not using the intervals related to the major key, but rather to the related chord that we are in, which is defined by the modes, basically. So, so I'm trying to reiterate that in my mind. Uh, and so we go through that. And then I also then go to the lean back shape and do the same kind of thing. And I also kind of was getting into this idea of the fitting the pentatonic shape and then building the arpeggio because it's kind of funny the way this shape works that I build this out and I build out like a lean back shape for 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 the first chord and a lean back shape for the second chord and I end up with the scale which is which makes sense once I start thinking about the arpeggio because the arpeggio is built from every other shape in the chord so from a two sh when you when you build the scale from a from just two note a two note shape you end up, that's why you end up with every other note being the chord that you construct, right? So every other note. So I just thought that was, I don't know exactly what to do with that insight, but I thought that was interesting. So then after that, we go back finally to the C again, and I tell my joke. It's a, it's a not a great joke, but it was kind of a long joke. I don't know. I don't, so, so you could skip that if you want. But then we go from the C here, and I go back to this C, we talk about the intervals, we count out the intervals, and I spend a little bit more time trying to think about building a chord shape from each of these. And once again, seeing what it means to say, well, if this is like, if this like the Phrygian, can I then use my intervals for the Phrygian to build a chord not based on the C, but on, on the related note here? And what can, what, why is it useful for me to know that it's Phrygian because it's going to help me construct. So I spent a little bit more time constructing chords on each of those notes uh, a bit. And then I get a little tired, but then I, I, try to, I try to just push through going to our one-stop part on the guitar ones where I, I do my practice routine of looking at all the modes in one place in the key of A, looking at A major, then compared to the Lydian, compared to the A mixolydian and then a minor and then compare that to the a dorian minor mode and the phrygian minor mode so that's basically what we do continuing on with what i would call shape number four looking at what i would call mode number one the ionian mode otherwise known as the major scale remembering that we're going to be using an absolute numbering system for the modes based on the ionian mode otherwise known as the major scale which makes the major scale crucially important for us to understand backwards forwards inside and out as they say because it's our rosetta stone it's our point of reference as we then navigate around the other modes such as the related modes of the dorian the phrygian the lydian the mixolydian and so on and so forth if we can refer back to the major scale as a point of reference it will help to orientate ourselves in a similar way as if we're floating around in space and every space that we could be in is equally the same as any other space but we still need to orientate ourselves by putting a point somewhere so we can make measures from that point similarly with the modes all the modes being tied together like a fractal picture you can derive any of them from the other ones but we need to stick a pen in it somewhere so we can tell where we are in relation to that pen. For Western music, that's generally the major scale, otherwise known as the Ionian mode. My goal here is to try to learn everything so that it is maneuverable, movable. I'm not so concerned with learning the names of the notes within the chords or within the scales but rather learning the relative positions. And that's basically what the modes do. 
if we learn the relative positions, that's the thing that's all changeable. That's like cutting and pasting something in an Excel sheet. It will be totally the same in terms of the relative positions. So that's why that's why I would like to learn things in terms of the the mode kind of numbering system and hopefully that is clear more as we map out uh, the fretboard here. So as we can see, we're in the major scale, the Ionian mode. Notice we have relative positions of seven notes out of 12 notes, which are gonna be relative positions because the starting point is relative to the mode we're in, even though all the related modes have the same notes within them. The numbering system for the modes then is gonna be the same as the relative positions to the major scale, but when we move to another mode like the Dorian mode, we're gonna have a relative numbering system which will have different notes in the relative positions even though it's the same seven notes. So therefore, in order to orientate ourselves, it's useful to use then the uh, modes that will have the same numbering system as the relative positions of the major scale, which is what we're gonna be using as our mode numbering system because again, that'll help us to kind of orientate ourselves on the fretboard while still being able to view the fretboard from basically uh, different modes. So as we think about the modes, the first thing people usually think of at, from a practical standpoint is, I would like to know if I build from the major scale, which notes I can build a major chord or minor chord from. So we typically uh, show that by saying, the major chords have a have an uppercase Roman numeral, that's the one, four, five, and the minors have a lowercase Roman numeral, the two, three, and six. So if we know the major scale, we start to memorize that, oh, okay, if I wanna build a song, if I have the one, the four, the five, kind of like the blues progression, although oftentimes you add a seven in there, but if you just have the one, four, five, three notes in the chord, those are gonna have a major chord construction, which a major third to it. And we memorize that the two, three, and six are gonna have the minor chord constructions. The seven is gonna have that diminished, which is a minor third and a flat fifth. The problem is that people have a problem when they go to Dorian or even to the relative minor because, because then the relative positions have changed. So if I use the same numbering system, most people make the Roman numerals on this numbering system over here and have to, I have to memorize which of the relative positions compared to the Dorian is gonna construct a major or minor. But if I was able to see the actual relative positions by mode in relation to the major scale, and I can make that, I can do that code switch in my mind, then I, I can, always refer back to the major and say, well, the one, four, five are major chord constructions and the, the two, three, and six are minor, the seven's diminished. So if I can say in Dorian that the sixth of the Dorian is equivalent to the seventh of the major scale, I know the seventh of the major scale is the diminished one where I'd have that diminished mode. Now, beyond that, we would like to know beyond that the actual modes, and that's what the numbering system gives us more detail because these modes themselves tell us which interval is different. So if I wanna build a chord that has more than three notes in it, more than a triad, I wanna add like the, 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 the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. The problem with that is we learn those chords just floating around and then we name them and we have to play, well, do we play this with a, with a nine in it or something? But we don't really think about like, how does that actually fit in the, in the, in the scale? I wouldn't know if it fits in the scale unless I knew the mode that I was in because the mode is the thing that's going to tell us those intervals. So that's what, that's why this is practical and I want to, why we're going to go over it here. So uh, that's the project. We've got then the, the intervals. So we want to also learn the intervals. There's three ways that I, I want to keep practicing to try to get my shapes down. One, I want to learn the scales by just shape. I'd like to know them by shape in terms of the full sh shape like this, as well as a shape within it, starting from each of the notes within it so I can play any mode within it and be able to recognize it within the shape. Uh, number two, I would like to be able to build the shape with the, the intervals. These are intervals from the root, in this case C, and if I measure out 
all of these distances from C, I will end up with the shape. So it's the same thing. And three, I would like to be able to know the whole and half steps if I was moving from one note to the, to the next note. So whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Those are the three ways that we'll come up with the same shape. They're all doing the same thing, and all three of them have their own uses when they might be applicable, right? When, when it might be useful to do one versus the other. In terms of the intervals, the, the Western music is based on the major scale. Therefore, these are kind of like the easiest intervals to learn because they represent the relative position of the seven notes in the scale. And then, and then uh, the, the name major uh, versus uh, the, the perfect is, gonna sh is going, it's supposed to tell us the distance that we're going. We have to memorize the distance. But people often forget that, so I'm going to add that here. That first number represents how many notes away it is in half steps. So we have a perfect first, which is the same C. C is, you know, the, the, the root is itself. We have a two note away major second, which is two notes away. And that's what we call a major second because it's the second position. We have a four note away major third. So it's a third. That's why, why it's a third over here. And it's four notes away, which I'm supposed to know by hearing major third. But we often forget that in the guitar. That's why I'm saying it's four notes away so that we don't forget that. We have a five note away perfect fourth. The fourth uh, over here represents the fourth position. It's, it's a perfect fourth, which means I should be able to tell that that means it's five notes away. But people forget that, so I'm going to say it five note away perfect fourth. A seven note away perfect fifth means it's the fifth position. Perfect, you can kind of think that perfect means, in essence, it's going to be the same in the main major and the main minor, Aeolian and Ionian modes. From a practical sense, that's the case. And then it's a seven note away, it's seven notes away. And then we've got the major six, means it's the sixth position. Major six means it's nine notes away. But because we forget that, I'm going to call it out nine notes away, major six, and a major seven, seventh position. Major means it's a seven note away, seventh. I mean, 11 note away, seventh. But again, I'm going to say that so that we uh, don't forget that. And then within our position over here, uh, we broke the fretboard into five positions, which makes sense. This is the most logical way to break the fretboard if we want to play chords that have multiple strings uh, within them, because this is where we're going to get most of the notes kind of in one, one stretch of the fingers, which is great. And so the next thing that people often do is break the shape into subshapes. This guitar is a five stringed instrument plus an added E string, right? So we have six strings, two E's. So if I think about it as a five string instrument, a lot of people break the subshapes into a two string, two string, one string. Uh, that's what I call the house analogy. So we have a double stop house, two strings, house double stop, two strings, and a flat, one string. And then the other way people think of it is the five note pentatonic, which is broken out into a three string, two string shape in essence, which is what I would call the hamburger here, which you could see more clearly here because it's pushed up because of the fault line. And then what I call the barbell, and we play the end of the barbells. So the next question would be, well, how do I go from a five note pentatonic to a seven note scale? Well, if you're in this five note pentatonic, we play the end of the barbells, and then we would add the middle notes, which would always be in the same position whatever key you're in, it'll shift up, right? <clears throat> uh, you add those two middle notes. And in, then in, in the hamburger, accounting for the fault line, you've got the hamburger. And then if you want to add the I've added two notes, you put the hat, the baseball cap on the bu top bun of the hamburger. And that puts the little ad added to the, to the right. And then you compensate for that with another little uh, item to the left. So we have the F out here and then the, the B back here, which I would possibly be better to say that the F is the Lydian mode and the B is the Locrian mode. So the two modes, interestingly, that we remove are the two L's. <laughs> the L's get removed, the Lydian and the Locrian. If we remember that the Lydian, so notice what I'm doing here. I'm not saying, well, I'm trying not to say it's the F and the B that get removed because that's only the case in the, in the Ionian or major scale. 
but if I move to the G, a G, for example, it's going to be different notes. But what I but it always will be the same that the Locrian and the uh, and and the Lydian or or the Lydian and the Locrian will be removed, right? If I could or or if I use absolute mode numbers, it's going to be absolute mode uh, number four and absolute mode number seven will be removed, right? So if I label it that way, then everything is movable, which is kind of my objective as a spreadsheet, you know, <laughs> like trying to move things around on the on the thing. Okay, so so that's what we're gonna work on, and then I'm gonna go, and then we're gonna go from this C, and I'm gonna do all of the mo all of the intervals, and then go around the horn up to here, comparing everything to that C to look at our intervals. Actually, I start. I did that last time. I'm gonna go from this C and then go backwards around the horn this way back to this C. Okay, so that's the one. And then we'll finally be done with this position and I'll move on to position number five maybe tomorrow. But before we jump into that, uh, let's just remember that this is not the only way to see these positions. I just wanna practice seeing them in different ways. These positions, the rule of this position is all of these shapes have a rule, which is that I'm gonna play, uh, I'm gonna play only four frets out. So the whole shape cannot be more than four to five frets, and I only play up to four frets at a time. I never span my fingers over five frets, and that's why we end up with three notes per string, three notes per string, three notes per string, and then two notes per string because we didn't reach out to this one because that would span five frets. And then we're back to three notes per string, three notes per string. So that's interesting. Also, by the way, when I go through this, I'm gonna try to build the chords so that we can use our intervals more practically, not only comparing them to the root, but also comparing each of the core, each, how can I build a chord based on this root, right? And so we'll take a look at that. But let's go back and think about the three notes. I've been focusing more on this three note per string. And I'm, if I'm in the key of C, notice I'm starting in the same place, which is basically the house here, what I call the, the house analogy in the box. I'm on the top right of the box, that doesn't change. It's the same starting point because I'm in the key of C, still the C major scale, same notes in it, but the rule changes. This is what I would call position number two now. Uh, and in position number two, Notice the full shape starts back here, even though I'm starting on the second note in the shape. And therefore, when I play this top shape, I can't go past this point. Even if, even if I started the shape here, I couldn't go past it because that would spread five strings. That's why in the three note per string, I go out here, but in the two note, in, in the normal shapes, position number two, I would go back here. So that's gonna be, you know, one of the major differences uh, within the shape. Now. So, so what I'd like to look at this shape this time that's a little bit different is to try to think about the arpeggios uh, within the shape and possibly think about the pentatonic. I haven't really been thinking about like the, the pentatonic within the shape. Whenever I think about this shape, I usually think about this, it as a seven note shape. But then we might wanna say, well, could I, how would I convert the seven note shape into a pentatonic? And how can I think about it in my three ways of thinking about it one being the intervals, two being the shape, and three being the holes and half steps. And so, and then I want to think about the the uh, the arpeggio, how the arpeggios kind of kind of fill out on this shape and the two note per string shape. So let's let's do that. Let's run through it real quick, and let's do this a couple different ways. First, we have let's do it by shape. If I think about this shape, notice the shapes that we have here. If I think about the three notes per string by shape, is we've got a three pillar shape, boom, 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 that starts on actually the G. So when I start on a C, I'm actually in the middle of what I call the three pillar shape. And then under the three pillar shape, it shifts up naturally, even though there's not a kink in the tuning right there or a fault line. And we end up with the, uh, the box double stop. Noting that every time I see this box, I'm not always gonna be playing in the same position when I use this three note per string method because the box is also up here, but I cut off the back of the box and I start in this side of the box and then I don't move back here, which we'll see why when we do the intervals. 
then I go to the beginning of the box to end it because I've got six notes, three, six, and then I'm back to the, to the start of the box. And then if I continue on, notice what happens. Now I'm basically in the same format as though I was at position number two from the top, meaning I have the same shape as I would here if I was playing position number two, do, 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 because I'm starting on the second note and I'm including the first note in the shape. And so then I go boom, 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 boom. So you can see what happens is the shape, we're kind of rotating around, you know, the, this box shape. And, I, and part of the reason that happens, remember before I think of this shape, the, the, the shapes we had before, we thought of it as a five note instrument and we thought about breaking out the strings in a two string, two string, one string, or a three string, two string breakout. But notice what's happening here is I've got a three string shape, and then I've got a two string shape, and then I've got a two string shape. So I actually have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven strings that before this thing, before this thing gets back to, right, is that right? Three, four, five, I'm sorry, seven. I have seven, I have seven, string like it, the shape would have to go through seven strings before it repeats but there's only like five strings plus the added e however you want to think of it five or six strings on the instrument so that's one thing just to understand by 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 shape here now it when we go through the shape it goes through the whole shape a couple times i get through a couple octaves a lot faster because we have three notes per string so we got we're up one octave here two octaves here and then I go up to this one and notice when I get to this E I think about that E repeating at the top again so it would repeat up here so it repeats up here again now here I'm calling it the Dorian if I started on that D but I can also think of it as just continuing with the key of C right if it was continuing with the key of C now I'm on this point and then I'd go down and no notice now I get to the G and there's the there's the the three pillars again so that to get back to the shape to see the whole shape i have to go i have to go i have to go from here boom that's the middle of the three pillars here's the two note per string what, what i would call the the box double stop the double stop box and then the bottom of the double stop box repeats and then we get to the top of the three pillars, which we have not yet seen. And then we get back to home, starting on the C, right? Which we, we already went, we already played the C as part of our last shape over here, but we started like at the beginning of the box right there. And now we're like back to like the middle of the box because it's the middle of the three pillars. So that's kind of interesting just to, just to note in terms of the shape. We're basically playing a shape that spans like I say, seven frets, even though we're on, in essence, like a five string instrument plus an added E. So we don't get to see the whole rotation of the shape until we go th actually through a whole set of strings and then go around the horn again. Okay. So one thing to note that I think is interesting, if I'm not sure exactly how to make that applicable, let's learn it the other way. Let's learn it through the, the uh, intervals. So we have a first to the second, we have a two note away, major second. So that's the same if I was in position number two, doing it that way, or in the three note per string. And then I move out to the third, and the third in the three notes per string would be out here. The third in the two note per string would of course be back here. So notice that again, it's really useful. I just keep wanting to reiterate this in my head is that when I'm playing in this shape, shape number two, it's useful for me to know that I could still reach, whoops, did I go, I could still reach out here to get that third because that third's really important. And I can't, and I, otherwise I have to switch my fingers to get it over here, which is kind of a mess. And I don't really like playing like this because I like doing the hammer-ons. So if I'm doing this, it's harder to do the hammer-on with like my pinky. And I like to do the hammer on the third anyways, because that it's the third, man, you need that. So that's useful to know. So then uh, the fourth, so now we don't have to go back to the third here, although we still could, obviously, but the thing that's in the shape is, the, is gonna be the five note away perfect fourth. That's the same in both shapes, position number two in the three note per string shape. 
And then we've got the fifth, which is a seven note away, perfect fifth, which is the same in both of the shapes, shape number two, as well as the three note per string. And then we've got the, the uh, uh, sixth. Now the sixth, again, is out here because we had to span more than you know four frets it would be back here so in my shape number two i would be going back here so even if i'm going to stay in shape number two it's useful to know that these two although outside the shape are are available to me and i can reach out there and, and then still go back into my shape and then we've got the seventh which is an 11 note away seventh which is the same under both uh, shapes and then back to the octave. So that's one way to see it. And the practicality of this shape up top, I think, is that is that we have all six notes on the top two strings. When I used to learn guitar by the like when I was first learning, I wanted to I just wanted to to play everything on the top two strings because I felt like I can do power chords and I felt like that was the easy thing to do. And so what I would do is I had this piano that kind of lit up. I didn't know how to play the piano, but it played a few songs automatically and it kind of lit up. So I can see the I can see the notes on a simple song. Like I started with like this song. Which is like green sleeves, right? And then I had to I didn't even know the keys on the piano, so I had to put sticky notes to tell me all the keys on the piano. And then I wanted to convert the piano to the guitar, but I wanted to make it on the top two strings only because I wanted to make it, I wanted to rock out green sleeves like. I can't really do it. But that's what I was trying to do. It was hard to do with green sleeves because it, because, <laughs> well, I don't want to get into that. But that was the idea, and I, and it was hard to do that because like, like, you always learn an open position, and you always learn these shapes. You don't learn the three note per string shape. You typically use this shape, which means you you end up down here on this. It's hard to do. It's hard to do a power chord down here. You can do it. But when, when I'm swinging wildly, you know, I don't want to go down there, right? Because then I'm just, I'm going to hit the top string. It's going to mess it all up. So that's what I was thinking. But in, if you do the three note per string shape, you kind of have that. You've got all the, you've got all six notes up top and then you can make chords on them. So if, obviously if you just did power chords, you've got the one, the five, here's the, the, here's the second note in there and there's the fifth of it. Here's the third and the fifth of it, the fourth and the fifth of it, the fifth and the fifth of it, and the sixth and the sixth of it. So it all fits in the, it all fits in, if I just do power chords. So the one, the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, everything fits, right? So that's useful. And the, and the only thing you're missing is the seven, uh, which, which, you know, you don't really need that much. Usually often anyways, people leave out the seven because it has that diminished bit in it. You can't do the power chord with that one because it's got the flat five. So it's like, whatever, I'm taking that one out. So that's kind of useful. Now, if I wanted to convert these into shapes, the other thing that's interesting is that I'm gonna try to start converting all the notes and whatever chords I'm playing in, in whatever scale I'm playing into chord shapes. So I, I have what I call lean forward shapes, which are typically bar chord shapes, and the lean backward shapes, which are typically on the top string, you would call them from a caged system, uh, G shapes because it goes do 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 and then the full G would be like down here and then back here right and then and then when you and then if it was on the second string it would be called a C shape because you look like a, a C right and then and and so and so that's so so if I did that the if I was on the one then we would make a, an E bar chord shape so here's the E shape back here we just bar it off and we have our E shape and then I'm not great at getting the whole, all five strings to ring out because I usually kind of cheat on the shapes, but we're gonna go then to the second one. And now we're on the second one is a minor. So then I can have my minor shape, which is an E shape, bar shape. 
and then if I went to the next one up, that's going to be the third is a minor. So the third is a minor. I can't really play it because I don't have a cutout, but there's the the third is a minor third, and then the fourth is a major. So if I'm on the second string, the major is going to be a lean forward, and that's going to be an A shape, which would be like this, right? A shape. And then it, because that's a because that's a a major, and then the fifth is going to be a major. So I shift up that A shape, and then the A is going to be a minor. So now I've got my A. Uh, minor shape bar shape which is just the a shape but now it's a bar so so that's interesting to know it's kind of hard to play on the c because you, you're way up here up top if you, at least if you're on on electric but that but that's interesting and also it's used to useful to know that in the major key the one four five have what some people i've heard some people call it the that british guy what's his name calls it an l shape right so that's right here from a power chord, right underneath it. Or from, you'd have the major E shape to an A shape to an A shape. So that's useful. So, so that, that shape is useful that way. Now let's think about it in terms of, oh, the, the lean back chords. The other way I can think about it is I don't have to, the chords I make from this don't have to be remaining in the same shape. So if I want to, if I, the other way I can think about it is like, well, I have room to lean back. That would be then the three. That's a major third from this shape, right? I can count that out because it's five minus one is four. And then this is going to be the fifth, seven that away, perfect fifth, five, ten, nine, eight, seven. That's what I would call, that's what a cage system would call like a G shape. So it's kind of wonky to play, but it's it's growing on me. So that's not too bad. And then and then if I moved up to the the next one, that would be a minor. So now we're on the two is a minor. That means the second is a minor third. So we just have boom, minor third. If I move up here, so. So, so, so how do I know it's a minor third? Because it's five, uh, four, three, three note away, minor third. And then if I go to the next one up, we're going to have the, the third of the scale is also a minor. So that's going to be a, uh, a three note away, minor third. And then if I go to the next one with a lean back shape, uh, we're on the minor. So this would still be like a C, you might think of it as like a C minor shape possibly. So, cause if it was a major, it'd be a C shape, right? So it'd be like that. Wait a sec. Wait, no, I did that. Hold on. I was already did the E. I did the E twice. The F would be a major. So there's the F, which has the major third right underneath it, which is a C shape. And then the G is going to have another major shape, which will be a C shape. And then you've got the A has a minor shape. So it has a minor third shape. So, so however I see the scale, once I recognize the notes in the scale, I can build a I can build a chord on it, and all the notes in the chord don't have to be in the scale shape, as long they're still in the the scale, but they're not in the shape that we're using because I can use a lean back shape or a lean forward shape, however I want to uh, build that out. And then if I look at this from a whole step half step kind of system, where are my holes in half steps? Well, I've got one is a whole step to two. And then two is a whole step to three. And then three should be a half step to four, which you could see right there. But typically, I'm not going up there. You could, because notice if you have stretchy fingers, you could be like. And you could grab that one. It's not too far out because it's only another half step, right? I don't need to keep this finger down. I might just want to grab that if I wanted to. But 
I can also grab the one right underneath it. And so it's a half step away. So remember that this distance from pinky to pointer, if I was to go from uh, pinky, if I was here and I, and I went to the pointer, it would be a whole step away. But now I'm going, I'm going pinky, I'm reaching five struts. Pinky, so, I'm, so it's not really pinky to pointer. I mean, it's kind of like I'm going pinky to pointer, but I'm reaching five frets instead of the comfortable four frets, which means it's gonna be a half step away. So we're gonna say boom, and then we're going, so that was one to two, two to three, three to four, three to four is a half step, four to five, four to five is a whole step, and then five to six is a whole step, And then notice that six to seven is also a whole step, and that's why it shifts up, right? Notice, so, so now I'm here, instead of going way back here, we're shifting up to the B uh, here. Wait, where am I? Went from here. Wait a sec. One, two. I'm on the wrong string. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it shift it shifted up because that's where the half step is right there. So it's a little wonky to kind of I mean that's where a whole step is and then the half step back home. So it's a little wonky to see where the half step is because because again like usually I'm used to seeing the whole thing in terms of we don't span more than five frets. And if you go four frets out, pinky to pointer uh, is a whole step. But if we go five frets out, then pinky, the fifth fret pinky to pointer is going to be a half step. And you don't really, and it's kind of wonky to see a little bit because the half step is between these two notes, right? So you don't really kind of see it right there as where the half step takes place. But you can kind of see it because that same note is right there. And then we end off on the half step in the major scale so i'll have to pond so i'll practice pondering through that more later because that's a little different to me and then i was also wanted to think of where the the if i wanted to convert this to a five note pentatonic so the five note pentatonic has the one two three in it and then it has the five and six it removes the lydian and the locrian the two l's get removed the lydian and the locrian so where do those lie so we've got the one is the ionian the two is the dorian the three is the phrygian and then the four is the lydian so that four would be removed so that's kind of interesting this one would be uh removed that f and here's the f so we would remove that one and then uh the the lydian the mixolydian the aeolian and then the and then the B is the Locrian. The Locrian would be removed. So you'd be removing this one, and you would remove this one, the leading tone. So that is interesting. So I'll have to ponder that more later. Okay. And then the other thing I wanted to think about is just the arpeggios, because the arpeggios are meaning if I wanted to make a major chord and just arpeggiate it in this shape, the major chord just skips every other note in the scale. So you'd have a one, you skip the two and you go to the three and then you skip the four and you go to the five. So the arpeggio of the scale would be this, which is, which is nice to know because then I could, I keep on going back there. I keep, so you've got the one, three, and then the power chord. Makes sense. And that, so that makes, so I was just trying to think about like how that fits in the shape that we have here. Because notice if we have three notes per string, if we're always playing three notes per string, notice what happens with the arpeggio is kind of interesting because then you have like, the first string is always going to be uh, in, and then the third string, you skip the middle one. And then on the second shape, 
it's always going to be just the middle because you're skipping the outer two and then you skip one and on the on the next shape it's always going to be the outers again and then on the next shape it's always going to be just the middle one oh what did i do control z it's always going to be on the next shape it's always going to be just the middle one and then it's going to be the outers again right well because we skip every other one so that's kind of so if i so the like the, the notes in the arpeggio would be one you skip the two you go to the three you skip the three i mean you one skip the two there's the third skip the four there's the fifth skip the six there's the seventh right here's the seventh and then skip the eight or back to one or eight and then you get to the ninth which is equivalent to the second now so now we're if so this would be the ninth is equivalent to the second and then you'd skip so it's kind of so it's kind of it's kind of interesting that if it was a three note per string you're always going to get you would think if you played through all of the arpeggios you'd, you'd always get like a outer two you, you play the outer two and then only the middle one and then the outer two and then the middle one i don't know if that's helpful at all but i thought that was interesting because i started looking at that over here in the two note per string shape so now i map out the same shape but now i'm just doing two notes per string so now we're going to say i go c d and instead of going to this e we go to this e f and then instead of going to this g we go to this g and so now we've got a two note per string shape which and the reason that arpeggio thing was interesting is because i was trying to see like if i play this shape it's basically a lean back shape duh, duh, duh. we have a lean back kind of a g shape from a cage system and then the second shape would be a lean back a lean back uh minor shape and then when i combine them together if you then the one of shape one of chord one to the one of chord two to the three of chord one to the three of chord two to the four of chord one to the no, to the five of chord one to the five of chord two makes the scale of C D E F G A. And it's like why why is that? That's kind of interesting. And that's of course because we skip every note to make a chord. So if I go so we skip every note to make a chord, so on the so on the C on this two note per string shape. I go C D and then it would go to E which we arpeggiated over the which we are arpeggiated over here but now the E is back here because we skipped because it's only two notes per string and then two notes per string would so C so we have the one not the two the three not the four but the five so it's kind of interesting when you look at this two note per string shape you you are of course building the lean back g shape because you're skipping every other note in in the scale and there's only two notes per string so one you skip the two there's the three you skip the four there's the five you skip the six there's the seven you skip the eight there's the nine and the d is the same way right so if i go to the d one the two would be up here is skipped and there's the three and there's the three so that's plugging the difference in so i just thought that's kind of interesting <laughs> i don't know if, i don't know if that's i don't know if that's practical at all maybe that's obvious uh duh but i don't know i thought that was it anyway but anyway let's look at this one from our three our three perspective standpoints so if i if i look at this one by shape then i could say well i think the easiest way to see it just by shape is to say hey look i'm just doing the first and i'm making my lean back g shape and then i'm taking the second and i'm making my lean back uh, g minor shape for a d chord 
and then I'm just putting them together and I can see that shape. And I think that's, at least for the first three notes, an easy way to see it. And I think that is fun to do. I've been playing with that a lot for the last couple days or so. And, okay, so that's interesting. And then, and then we can also see, let's, let's go through the intervals. So this is what I would call, once again, shape number two in the yellow. And we're spanning back to what I would call shape number one, and then all the way back to shape number five, because there's only five shapes. So if I go from here to here, we've got, there's my minor second. And now in the three note per string system, I would move out here, but no, because I'm in two notes per string, which goes back here, which is in the same position as I would be in my like shape number two. So I go back here, so I'm kind of the same as in shape number two to the four note away uh, major third. And then we go to the five note away perfect fourth, which is still kind of in shape number two and in the three note per string shape. So that's the five note away perfect fourth. But then when I go to the fifth, instead of going here, as I would do in shape number two, I instead go back here because only two notes per string. And that's what's making me lean backwards now. So now I'm going back to this G here. Uh, right, well, I want to compare it to, th that's going to be a seven note away perfect fifth. And then we've got the next one is a, a nine note away major six. Nine note away major six. And then we've got the 11 note away major seven. So instead of going out here, leading back home, two note per string takes us back here. So we go back here, it's kind of a reach. And then octave. So that's kind of interesting, all right? So then, so then I can make a chord from each of these, just to note that, how would I do that? Uh, well, if I did a lean forward chord, what I call lean forward or bar chords, I would have the one, which would be my E shape bar chord, because it's a major. And then I would have the two, which would be a minor. So we'd say the twos right here, that would be a minor, which would be an E minor shape. And then we've got the three which would be an E. So now I'm going back to this one. So that would be an E minor. So that would be like an A shape up here, A shape bar chord, minor. And then we can go to the four, which would be like a, a, a major, A shape major, A shape F. And then we've got the five, which is gonna be down here, which gets a little wonky. That's the thin one. That's like a D shape, which is like this D shape, but then with this G chord D shape. And then, and then it goes to the A. If I'm, oh no. If I was to lean forward on that one, it would be an A shape like this. And then if I go to the seven, I messed up over here, but then that would be my diminished. I won't, I won't build the whole shape on it. Wait a sec, that's not right. Anyway, let's now then what if I did the lean back shapes? If I did a lean back shape from this one, it would be a G shape from a, from a cage system, one, three, five. Lean back shape from this one would be a, D, a G minor shape from a cage system, the, the D, the F, the A. If I played it from here, the lean back shape would give me a E minor which, which might let's call it a C minor shape, just leaning right back along our 
Let's just, and then here we'd get a we get an F major. Uh, and then if I go to the G, we're gonna say if I go to the G, then because of the kink in the tuning, it's just these three. And then if I go to the A, the minor equivalent of that shape would be these three. And then the B, and I'll stop it there. And then if I did, so that's interesting. Uh, okay, let's do the intervals. So if I did the intervals from here, it would be one whole step to two, and then two, and then two goes a whole step to three. But instead of this three, it's going to go to this three back here. Notice that's pinky to pointer if I was going this way on a four frets. So that's a whole step to me that makes sense. When I go five frets out, it kind of gets wonky to me. And then we go from the three to the four is our half step, which we can clearly see now because it's inside of our box again. And then we go from the, the four to the five is a whole step four to the five is a whole step and then from five to the six goes from pinky to pointer which is a whole step that makes sense and then six that was five to six i got lost hold on a second where was i I'm on the six, which is the A, and then uh, six, six to, uh, I'm on the A, six to seven is going to be a whole step, and then seven to eight, wait a sec, six to seven is a whole step. And then the seven to eight is our half step finally. Sorry about that. Getting a little tired. So there's our whole steps and half steps. I should look at my, my pentatonic in there, but I'm going to leave it at that. So now let's go back to C. I'm getting a little tired of looking at these. So that's, I'm not sure if any particular important insights came from that, but I think it was worth looking at. All right, so now we're going to go back here and I'm going to do my intervals going from the top around the horn uh, to this one so I can just learn my uh, normal interval shapes. Uh, and so we can basically see all the shapes by interval as best as possible. But first, a quick joke here. So there's my practice session joke. All right, get some coffee on this one. All right, you know... <clears throat> Ahem. You know, I've been labeled an armchair philosopher, which which I don't which I don't really find offensive or anything. But to be honest, uh, because honestly, it's it's an essential part of my my budding armchair philosophy. But to be honest, because honesty is is an essential part of my budding armchair philosophy. I'm more of a I'm more of a wannabe armchair philosophy, uh, not, not not having really raised to the greatness in the field of sitting sitting and thinking yet. Plus plus the armchair I philosophize on does not actually have arms, which kind of you know makes the term a little bit difficult because 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 I like to play the guitar on my armchair between my armchair philosophizing sessions and and my armchair's arms were getting in the way of holding my guitar so i removed the arms from my armchair so now i'm actually more of an an armless chair philosopher i'm not an armchair philosopher i'm an armless chair i'm an armless chair philosopher Except that when I say armless chair philosopher, it almost sounds like I'm the one without the arms sitting on a chair which has the arms. But that's not the, the chair's the thing that doesn't have the arm. I'm an I'm an armless chair colon 
philosopher. An armless chair colon philosopher. Dang it. But that if that doesn't sound like, that kind of sounds like I'm, I'm an armless philosopher philosophizing about colons. I don't like that term either, really. Whatever, I'm going, I'm going with it. I'm an armless, I'm an armless chair colon philosopher. And, and I, I don't think I could ever be, I don't think I could ever really compete with the great armchair philosophers out there. You know, there's been some great long history of armchair philosophers, but maybe, maybe I could be like a bigger fish in the smaller pond of the armless chair philosophers, right? The armless chair colon philosophers. There's not, there's not as many of them. So I might, I might be able to, you know, be the big fish in the pond there. Just, just to be clear, my armchair has no arms, you know, you know, because I'm now I'm thinking like the term armless, the term armless chair kind of sounds like the arm chair has less than the normal amount of arms because it's armless, right? So possibly like it's a chair with one arm or something, but no, my chair is armless, meaning, meaning it has no arms at all, not even one arm. Uh, and I'm so, so I'm more like an, a, like a no armed, I'm a no armed chair philosopher. No, wait, I am armed. I don't, don't make, don't make mistake. I am armed. I'm armed to the teeth. Now, even my teeth are armed. Better watch yourself because my teeth will, my, my teeth will reach out and grab you. That's how armed they are. Anyways, I'm a, I'm a no armchair philosopher. A no armchair colon philosopher. So it doesn't, but dang it, that sounds like I'm a, that sounds like I'm philosophizing about, about colons not being properly armed or something. I don't know. Whatever, I give up on, naming stuff is hard. Let's go, let's just get back to the guitar. Okay, so we're gonna say that we're gonna be from, let's go from this C right here. So I'm in what I call position number four this time. And we're looking at uh, the C. And let's say, let's say we're gonna go backwards around the horn to this C uh, because we went the other way last time, so we're kind of wrapping this up. Hopefully, this time, finally. Uh, so we're on. Let's go to. We're going back to here. So let's just go through the interval. So if I so if I went from the C behind the C, then I'm going from the eighth back to the seventh. So the eight back to the seven. We know that the seven of a major scale is a. Uh, if I go back to the seven, is a. Uh, 11 note away major 7. How do I know that? Because if I went from this B to that C, it would be one note away, and the 12 minus 1 is 11, which I can prove by going to like a B over here and counting up 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Hold on, by going to a C and counting up 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 gets me to the B. So it's a circle. All right, so, so if I played this this way, this would be a one note away minor second, but if I play backwards from C to B, that's an 11 note away major seven. Okay, let's also just think about this in terms of the, the, the space. We're on the, the seventh of an Ionian scale is mode number seven, which is the Locrian mode, noting that the Locrian mode is within what I call the house part of the house analogy, up in the basement behind uh, the C. So it's always gonna be there uh, in terms of the mode. And it's also the mode that would be removed if we went from a seven note major scale back to a five note pentatonic. We would remove this part of the box and this part of the box, the two L's, the Locrian and uh, the Lydian. In the five note pentatonic shape, we're talking in the barbell part of the shape where normally we play the outer parts of the barbell and would have to add this B, the inner part, if I wanted to go from a five note to a seven note uh, major shape, going from the five note pentatonic to the major shape. Now, if I was to build a chord off of that, notice this is the funny uh, Locrian. So, so it has, the Locrian has a third in it so I could get to the third back here. So I could say, well, there's like a third back here. 
and then and then there's a fifth the here's here's the main part of, of it if i took the the flat fifth right so if i want to get the essence of the locrian then i could say i'm taking this bit to get that tension sound that resolves back to here uh, uh, so let's just keep it at that so then i'm going to go from back t from the uh, seven go back to the sixth so now we're going to go to the sixth which is a uh, a so that's going to be a the sixth of a major scale is a nine note away major six how do i know because if i went from a to c that would be three notes inverse 12 minus three which is nine so if i see this shape going this way a to c three note away minor third and therefore the inverse 12 minus three c to a nine note away major six the a is is the sixth of the major scale which is absolute mode number six otherwise known as the aeolian mode or the minor scale the minor scale is not in the house in the seven note house of analogy because it's not a major it's not a major and the only minor that lives in the house is phrygian so it does its own thing over here in the double stop part of the shape and with regards to the five note pentatonic hamburger the three string two string layout it's on the end of the barbell so it's on the barbell with the other heavy hitter on the minor the phrygian the dorian being kicked out because it has two major uh intervals in it so it's not it's not as weighted as the other one so it's on the end of the of the barbell what if i was to build a shape off of that and say okay well i'm going to take that sixth and build the shape well i know it's the sixth and therefore the sixth of the major scale the two three and six we build a minor chord from so the first thing i would think is well that's a bar chord because it's up at the top major that would be a a minor bar chord which would be an a minor shape so i could build it up that way and notice when i'm looking at the shape i'm looking at it as compared i can build it by interval right if i'm which i could see most clearly with a lean back shape where i could see the third is right there there's a third away so right there's the the minor third so that the three note away minor which would be five four three from this note not from this note right now i'm building i'm building the shape based off this knowing that the aeolian has intervals that are all the same as 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 the minor right so all the intervals compared to this a will still fit in the key of c because aeolian and ionian are related modes right and so and so here's the and then so here's the fifth of it so copy and paste so if i did a three note it would be like that and then i can go on and keep on adding to it if i wanted to noting that i have the minor six minor you know seven related to this one so if i wanted to put like the minor seven in there or something i could i could go down and grab uh that note right i could say okay let's pull in the third maybe and then grab the seven i'll leave the fifth out and do something like that right i know that that's cool that's fine so so right so now i've basically got like a a major but then i've added I mean, I'm sorry, a minor, a minor, but instead of picking up the fifth, I've dropped the fifth in order to add uh, the minor seven, and the seven is still in, you know, the shape, and is still in the same notes as the C major shape because it's a related mode. All right, okay, so let's go back then to the the uh, the fifth. So now we're on a uh, a fifth which is going to be the fifth of a major scale is a seven note away perfect fifth. How do I know? Because if I went from top to bottom, G to C, that would be a five note away perfect fourth, five notes between the strings, seven minus five or 12 minus five is seven. So from bottom to top, that's a, that's a seven note away perfect fifth. So, so top to bottom, five note away perfect fourth, bottom to top, seven note away perfect fifth. All right, and then if I built a chord on that, notice I know it's the fifth, the fifth of a major because the one, four, five are major, 
the major chords, I know I, I could build a major chord from it. So if I saw it back here, let's take this G so I could see it more easily. I can lean forward on that G and make my, my leaning forward uh, shape, which would be an E shape. So that would be, there's the, the one, there's the five, here's a one repeated, and then you've got the, the third. So that's gonna be my, my E shape. I can then lean it back, which will give me, and maybe that one would be easier to see the fingering up here. If I lean it back, I've got the one, and now the third is a major third, four note away major third, because it'd be five minus one is four, and then I've got the fifth. So there's my lean back shape. Right, and then I, but, and that's my three note, but I also know that if I know beyond that, that this is the fifth is the mixolydian, then I also, I can, I can add other things such as the distinctive mixolydian interval, which is different from the major, which is that it has a minor seven in it. So let's do that one up here. I could say, okay, well, where's uh, the minor seven? If I'm on this G, I know it's right here by shape. 10 note away minor seven is gonna be that F. So, and then where's the, where's, uh, the third? Well, the third is right here. So that's why you get this little triangle shape here, which is that diminished D sounding. And that's why I get that, I, that's not, that, that minor seventh will not work, at least not in the same key, unless you're doing something bluesy, which means you're switching, you're muddying up the keys, which is cool. But if I went to the C over here, for example, I can't, I can't do that, right? I can't go, I can't be in the same, they're not, it's not a, a colored note, right? Here's the third right here, but the bluesy note would be right there. I could still play it. I can add that note, which is cool to do, but it's not in the key, right? Whereas over here, it is the fifth. It is in the key. It's the only one that actually fits in the key that we're basically uh, playing. So that's useful to know. And that's why I say, the, like I say, these, in, these knowing the absolute mode numbers, I think is really, to me, helpful to do that. That's what I'm working on at least. Maybe I'm delusional. Maybe I'm missing something. I miss lots of stuff. I swing, I swing at things all the time and get nothing but air, but I keep swinging. I keep swinging. We're going, <laughs> let's go to the, let's go to the next one. We're going to say, this is going to be the fourth. And, uh, it has a, uh, a five note away perfect fourth. How do I know that? Because if I went from the F to the C, it would be a power chord, seven note away perfect fifth. That would be five, five from here to here, six, seven. And then 12 minus seven is five. Therefore, going from bottom to top, C to F is a five note away perfect fourth. If I was to build a chord from that, let's go to this F just to see it. It would be this F, boom. And then I can build a chord, which would be a, an E bar chord with an F on it. So there would be the one, this would be the five, there's the one repeated, and, uh, and then there's the, the third, right, related to this F. So it's almost easier to see leaning back. If I lean back on the F, let's do it from this one. I could say there's my uh, F leaning back. There's a G-shaped F. One, three, five, measuring everything from this F now using our intervals. And, and so, so I know that because it's the fourth is a major chord that gives me a major third, which is this one. The fifth always have the same relative position. And then I can, I can also say, well, what's the distinctive factor in a Lydian? The Lydian has a distinctive fourth to it, which is kind of easy to remember. If you remember that the Lydian is the fourth absolute mode, the way we're doing it, that mean, and it happens to have the fourth interval being the funny one, which is an augmented fourth. So uh, normally the fourth is right underneath it, like here, but now it's out here and you could see it right here, right? You could see that right there. So that B is the augmented fourth. So, so if I'm doing something, let's do it over here. If I was on this one and I'm, and I'm playing this shape of the F, I could, I could just, uh, uh, the, 
this it normally would be out here, right? To play the F, boom, boom, boom. But then I could sneak this finger in here to get to get that diminishy to get that tensiony sound and still be in the key. I messed up. Right, so so that so that's something I I could kind of do there, which I couldn't do anywhere else, right? If I played this C, if I did the same thing on the C up here, I I don't have that same within the same key. The, I still have the major chord, bar chord, an E shaped lead chord bar chord, but I don't have that. I don't have this note, the flat fifth or the augmented fourth. That would be out of the key. But I do have that over here, so that's kind of just useful to know. That gives you that added options. If I'm in the F, to still be in the key, I could play around with that with that flat sound. And is there another B I can reach over here? It would be like way out here. That's kind of a that's kind of not reachable. I have an open B, so if I was to play like the open B. So now I'm trying to. <laughs> or I can play it this way. So, so that's kind of interesting. All right. Let's go back on over and let's go back to now we're on the third. So the third. Do -do -do gonna be here that's gonna be a four note away major third how do I know because if I count it down this way it'd be five six seven eight and twelve minus eight would be four so if I go from E to C eight note away which would be a minor nine therefore from bottom to top C to E that's a four note away major fourth now I also know that the third of the major scale is something because the two, three, six, I usually make a minor chord from it. So a minor chord would look like, like this, like a, like a, uh, an, an E minor shape that I can build here uh, if I leaned forward and that would be here, duh, 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 right? And then back here to, if I lean backwards, it would be the, uh, like a minor G shape, one, three, five. All right, and I also know that the, that this is in the the Phrygian, and the Phrygian has. If I know it's in the Phrygian, I can I can say, well, what's the distinctive note there? It's still it's still by the way, because it's a minor has the seventh in it, which would be a minor seven, which would be here. So I can do that shape and pull pull in that seven, which is cool. So I can say. This would be the minor seventh, five, ten note away, minor seven. So now I drop the fifth. And I played a seven in place of it, and I'm still in the same key. And the seventh, by the way, for the minors is always the same, I believe. Yeah, it's always the same. So so that always works, which is kind of cool. And with the majors, you've got the, my, the mixolydian is the only one that has the seventh that is actually like a minor seventh as opposed to a major seventh, which is why the mixolydian is kind of a, the, the bluesy sounding one kind of fits in with the minors blending the difference between a major and a minor. So then, so that's interesting. It also has that distinctive uh, second in it. So this is the one that's not in the other minors. So I can, I can, if I'm doing a lean forward shape, I can grab that. One way I can grab that is over here. So I can say I'm playing this, this, this in a normal E minor shape and then slip my pinky out to here. So I'm, now I'm switching from the third. I'm taking my finger, I, I'm sorry, I'm taking my finger off the first, a repeated first, and I'm adding a, a, a minor second in it because, and it's still in the key. Again, notice I can't do that if I was in if I was playing like like a D or an A, like an A minor. 
still I could still play my E shape for an A minor. That works. But I don't have a flat second, right? Only the Phrygian has the flat second. So if I went out, I can't like, if I slip my finger up like that, it's gonna sound a little wonky. It sounds like I switched to A Phrygian, right? But, uh, but if I was on the E, then I could do that and I'd still be in the same key because, it, because the Phrygian has that distinctive. So, so this is what always drove me crazy because when people talk about all these fancy chords, they just kind of talk about a fancy chord as if you can kind of throw it in anywhere, but they don't say where it, like you don't really know where it fits unless you know the related, the related modes help. I don't know how else you would figure out where the thing fits unless you know the related modes and the distinctive interval in the related mode and then and then kind and then you can kind of then it makes sense right i feel like but in any case let's go back to then here so we can do that same thing down here and compare okay i'm getting tired of this i'm a little tired i'm going to stop this for now uh let's go let's do the one last thing that i like to practice which is just going through all of the modes in one position the key of A. So we'll just go through all the modes, comparing the majors, the majors, and the minors to the minors. So we start here. This is what I call position number two. You might call it a, uh, you might call it a, just a major shape position. Cause if you start on the second note, which most people do of position number two, you'd be playing a major scale. Although the first note would be the, the Locrian shape. Uh, you might also call it a, uh, if you look at the, the, you might also call it a E shape from a cage system. And so if I played through, then it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so from from a whole steps and half steps, you've got a whole step to two, one to two, uh, two to three is the whole step, three to four is the half step, four to five is the whole step, five to six is a whole step, six to seven is a whole step, seven to eight is the half step. So the half steps here are between uh, one, two, three, four, three to four, and then seven to eight. It's in the box, here's the box. We start on the top of the box, so three to four, and then back to the box over here, seven uh, to eight. So it's interesting to note that those holes and half steps are basically the difference between the five note pentatonic and the seven note major because the two Lydian notes are, I mean the two L notes, Lydian and Locrian are removed. So one is major, two is Dorian, uh, three is, the three is the, the uh, Phrygian, the four Lydian is removed, right? Remove the Lydian and that's the half step. And then the five uh, is mixed Lydian the six is Aeolian, the seven is Locrian, and then after Locrian, uh, where the Locrian would be removed, and then you get the, to, the, to, the, to the octave. So it's interesting to note that if you look at the notes removed, Lydian and Locrian, the half step is always gonna go from what I would call absolute mode number three, Phrygian to Lydian. That's where the half step will always be even when we shuffle up to like the Dorian mode, we'll have the relative positions different, but the modal relationships in terms of absolute modes, which are based on the major scale relative positions will remain the same. So if I look at the, the absolute mode number three, Phrygian to Lydian, you, that's where the half step will be, which in the case of the Dorian mode will be between the second and the third. And then and then in terms of the Locrian, which is removed, it's going out of the Locrian. Locrian back home, the seven back home to the one Ionian. That's where the, that's where the half step lives. So that's interesting to note, I feel like. Okay, let's compare that then. And so I did it that way. And then by interval, if we do it by interval, I'll do this more quickly. You've got a, a two note away. Let's just, I'm just looking at these intervals. I'll just finger through them. You've got a two note away, major second, three note away, uh, I'm four note away, major third, five note away, perfect fourth, seven note away, perfect fifth, a nine note away, major six, 11 note away, major seven, 
octave. All right, let's compare that then to the Lydian. So with the Lydian shape, we're switching the fourth. It's I've got the wrong th thing here. It should be a f uh, 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 a six note away augmented fourth, whereas this says flat fifth. Same distance, but we need a fourth, so we would name it an augmented fourth instead of a flat fifth. So so that's going to be this one, and we're going to say, okay, so what does that do to my shape? It basically changed my shape from what I would call position number two or an E shape to position number four, what I would call position number four. If you look at that from the cage system, I can look at the related major, which is an E, and uh, the related major is an E and from the E position I would build a uh, a chord which would be a C type shape chord and so that would be a you can call it a C shape you might also call it a Lydian shape if you start on the second note a second note Lydian shape okay so if I was to play that up it would say one, two, three, four. There's the distinctive four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so that's going to be that one. The distinctive note is that fourth. If I didn't play either of these two notes, then I wouldn't know if I was in the Lydian or the major scale, which is interesting. Uh, if I look at the whole steps and half steps, we've got one whole step to two, two whole step to three, three whole step to four, and then we're in the box, top of the box, four, half step to five, five whole step to six, six whole step to seven, seven half step to eight. So it's interesting that we still have the half step going from seven to eight which makes which makes it majory sounding because we've got that leading tone still so we've got seven to eight and that of course from a modal standpoint is going from the it's it's going into the lydian so we've got the three to the lydian the lydian is what what would have been removed if we had a pentatonic scale so we've got the three to the Lydian, that's where the half step is. And then the Locrian is going from Locrian to, to the major, from seven to, to one. And, and here it's gonna be, that's from the fourth to the fifth. So fourth to the fifth and seven to the eight. Okay. And then in terms of intervals, I've got a two note away major second. We still have a four note away major third and then we've got a diminished so now we've got a six note away diminished fourth oh, i'm sorry six note away augmented fourth even though it says diminished there because it's messed up my worksheet's messed up and then we've got the fifth which is a seven note away perfect fifth we've got a nine note away major six We've got an 11 note away major seven. We've got the octave, 12 note away octave. All right, so I'm, I'll leave it there. Mixolydian, let's just run through these because I'm tired. We're gonna go Mixolydian. So now we've changed what I would call shape number, uh, shape number two to Mixolydian, which is what I would call shape number five or just a Mixolydian shape or from the caged system. If I looked at the related major, which would be the Ionian or a D, it would be, I would create a shape from that, which would be an A shape. So you might call it an A shaped uh, position. And uh, so if I was to play through this, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Distinctive interval, the seventh. There's the distinctive interval. And that means that we don't have that. This is the one that doesn't have the leading tone and it's got that seven that's like a minor, like the minor, which gives us that diminishy sound. So, so 
that if I count this up in terms of intervals, we got one is a whole step to two, two is a whole step to three, three is a half step to four, four is a whole step to five, five is a whole step to six, and six is a half step to seven, seven is a whole step to eight. So the box is right here, one whole step to two, two is a whole step to three, and the third is at the top of the box, which I know is the locrium. That's the one that would be removed. So if I went to a pentatonic, so that's, and I know that going out of the that top of the box, which is locrium, to the next one, which is Ionian, is the half step. So that's why it's one whole step two, two whole step three, three half step four, four whole step five, five whole step six, and then six half step to the seven. And I know that that seven, because it's in the box and these two are removed from the box, is the Lydian of this shape. And that's where the half step is uh, on going to the into the Lydian. And then whole step from seven to eight. So I'll mull that on more later. Uh, did I do the intervals? Intervals has a two note away major second for the mixolydian. It has a four note away major third, five note away perfect fourth, seven note away perfect fifth, nine note away major six, and a, wait, nine note away major six, and a 10 note away major seven, or minor seven octave. Let's do that again. Two note away major second. It's got a four note away major third, Five note away, perfect fourth. Seven note away, perfect fifth. Nine note away, major six. And then the distinctive octave of the ten note away, minor seven. And then the eleven note away octave. Okay, so that's that. And so the, dis the distinctive factor here between this and the related major is this seventh. If I didn't play that, that would be the distinctive. Let's go to the minors. So the minors, this is what I would call position number one now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And if I adjust my intervals from the major to the minor, all of the majors turn to minors except for the minor second and the perfects remain the same, which builds this shape. So if I look at the whole steps and the half steps, You've got, and you've got a, let's just move this down. You've got a one is a whole step to two, and now I'm in the box. Two is a, whole st is a half step to three. And I know that this two is the one that would be removed. So that's where the half step is. It's between that one, which is the Locrian, that B would be the Locrian, and then the C. Okay, and then, so one whole step to two, two half step to three, three whole step to four, four whole step to five, five half step to six, which again, that's in my box. The, the F is what would be removed or what was added if you think about it from the hamburger analogy and therefore that's where the half step is. So it's between one, two, three, four, five, six, six whole step to seven, seven whole step to eight. Okay, in terms of intervals, you have a perfect first. You've got a two note away minor, major second still. A three note away this time, minor third. A four note away, perfect fourth. Five note away, perfect fifth. Six note away, minor, I mean eight note away, minor six. Eleven note away, minor seven. Twelve note away, octave. Okay, so that's that one. Let's compare the two minor modes to it which is the uh, Dorian. So the Dorian changes just the sixth, which is a to, from a minor six to a major six, which converts our shape from what I would call shape number one to what I would call shape number three. You might just call it a Dorian shape because you, if you play from the top, it would be a Dorian. And uh, you also might call it, if you, from a cage system, if you look at the relative major, which is here, it would be a G in this case. And then I was like, all right, I play from the G. That would be a D shape here or here. Right, so D shape. 
so you might call it a D shape. So if I played this out, it would be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Distinctive interval. One, two, three, four, five, six. Instead of this six, seven, eight. So so then if I look at the the intervals, you've got perfect first, two note away, major second still, which is normal for a minor mode. Three note away, minor third, normal. Four note away, perfect. Uh, five note away. Perfect fourth, normal. Seven note away, perfect fifth, normal. But instead of the nine note away, you've got the nine note away here. I'm sorry, instead of a, <laughs> it's, <laughs> instead of an eight note away, you've got the nine, you've got the nine note away major six. And then you've got the ten, ten note away minor seven. Let's do that again. Two note away, major second. Three note away, minor third. Four, five note away, perfect fourth. Seven note away, perfect fifth. Nine note away, major six. That's the funny one. Ten note away, minor seven. Twelve note away, octave. Okay, and let's do the last one. Phrygian. So Phrygian has a distinctive second in it, which converts from what I would call shape number one to what I would call shape number four, which is the same shape as the Lydian is, but this time we play on the stop note instead of the last note. The last time the Lydian was shifted back, you will remember if we were playing a Lydian, we would have that half step going from here to here. When playing a uh, Phrygian, we're going from here to here, but it's still shape number four. This time you can call it the Phrygian shape from because you play a Phrygian from the first note. If you look at the related major, it would be the Ionian or F here. So if I looked at that F and built a chord, it would be a C shape chord. So you might call it a C shape. Position four is a C shape. Uh, if I played that up, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Distinctive interval. The second. In terms of uh, uh, whole steps and half steps, I'm on the bottom of the box. We start off, you can see it down here at the bottom of the box. And so I know the bottom of the box, that second note is the Lydian, and that's the one that would be removed. That's where my half step is. So it goes one half step to two, two whole step to three, three whole step to four, four whole step to five, five half step to six, because I'm back in the box again. And this E would be the Locrian, which is the one that would be removed because I removed the corners of the box if I was to go from a seven note to a five note. So once again, one whole step, one half step to two, two whole step to three, three whole step to four, four whole step to five, five half step to six, six whole step to seven, seven whole step to eight. Okay, intervals, you've got a two note away, a one note away minor second, that's the distinctive interval. You've got a three note away major third, all the rest will be the same, I'm sorry, minor third, all the rest the same as the minors, Three note away minor third, four note away perfect uh, fourth, five note away perfect fifth, eight note away minor six, ten note away minor seven, and twelve note away octave. All right, I'm gonna stop there. <laughs>